Welcome, beloved, to my diary. I'm Tatami. Today we're going to talk about AOC. This is not going to be, I think, a very pleasant conversation because I don't think anybody really wanted to hate AOC. I think most of us really wanted to be on her side. And I think most of us wanted to give her the benefit of the doubt. We, you know, there are times where you can accidentally do the wrong thing. And I think most of us wanted to give her the benefit of the doubt for the last few years years but we have gotten to the point where AOC is absolutely taking the money from grassroots organizations and people and she is giving it to establishment Dems corporate Dems all in the name of keeping the keeping the Democrat majority I guess the blue majority which is frankly not what she was put or the rest of the squad was put in the house to do or put in the federal government to do. They were put into the federal government to make a, a stink, to not be friends, to act as a stone wall, as a way so that we could really aggressively push things that in this country are seen as somehow left wing, but for the rest of the world is rather centrist, mild, mediocre beliefs, things like health care for all, things like paying attention to climate change and addressing it. These are not radical left ideas. Radical left ideas would overhaul this entire system and leave your head spinning from how many people were suddenly demoted from positions of power so that we could make this place flippin' equal for once. That's what actual leftist policies would do. But for some reason, the voice of the left has been AOC, who is very mildly centrist. Again, with her beliefs, these are not radically left beliefs. So I will say I have often sat back in critical silence and thought to myself, I'm not sure what exactly we're fighting for with AOC. AOC just seems like She's just another person who we should just mildly consider on our side, not somebody who should be considered the hero, the Joan of Arc of the left, in which she has been. She's been the voice of the left. She's been slapped on magazine covers as some sort of revolutionary. And that's how she's read by so many um, right-wing organizations. And she's absolutely ridden on this wave but I mean the last month especially especially I mean it was hard when she was against Medicare for all but the last month or two especially has been particularly hard to swallow with AOC where she's out here like she's supposed to be the voice that is highly critical of Biden's border um, the real crisis, in my opinion, is the fact that we have nursing mothers stuffed shoulder to shoulder in rooms at, that have glass walls that Ted Cruz can walk past with his phone and take videos and ogle and stare at these moms while they're nursing. To me, that's the crisis. To me, the crisis is that we have the law set up so that parents are now deciding to send their kids alone across the border instead of coming across the border with their kids so that their kids will be ripped out of their arms when they get there. They're choosing to do that separation on the other side and that's supposed to be more humane and that's what AOC is arguing she's like angry arguing that and for me as a mother I honestly feel like at the end of the day my baby's not with me and I was the victim I was the refugee I was the asylum seeker coming with child who is directly impacted because your country is in my country directly impacting the government directly impacting the economy directly impacting how we live and so at the end of the day whether i go to the border and you surprise me and take my child or i have to go through this crazy situation where i am telling my underage child how to go without me miles with strangers 
to go try to do it myself because the law is specific that only the kids can try to seek asylum right now. It's just like, AOC, what are you doing? There are so many people already arguing that viewpoint. I don't understand why she thinks it's her viewpoint to argue these centrist ideas except for the fact that she's actually really a centrist and that she actually really at this point has decided unlike when she first started when she was like oh well i don't care if i'm only here one term now i think she really has decided that hey i might be able to be the next pelosi but i think that's so short-sighted because there are so many people like I'll be real, like, Nina Turner is such an inspiration in that example because it's like, when even when she's not in office, and so also Stacey Abrams, even when, I don't even like Stacey Abrams like that, her policies like that, whatever, but she's a true testament to the fact that you don't even have to be in office to make a difference, to make a difference politically, to be seen as a political figure, to make moves and waves politically. Honestly, in my opinion, AOC does not have to be using her position in government as a crutch like she is, except the fact that she is shows that she is not actually as leftist as many think she is. So uh, what I'm here to say is not that we need to rail on her, denounce her, call her all sorts of fraud, hate her, all sorts of things. What I am here to say is, please can we admit she is not who people were painting her as we do not have to accept the narratives of the right about who is actually a radical leftist okay i am a radical leftist and when people out are out here trying to paint aoc as a radical leftist i have to be out here like y'all she's not a radical she's not a radical leftist she's not a radical anything she is moderately centrist with a very i mean and I'm saying this as somebody who has noticed that as other people who have started their channels around the same time as me, they haven't gotten as much, you know, as many followers as me. And I'm going to come out and say it. I think some of it has to do with pretty privilege. And I think AOC absolutely also rides on that. It's not something you can help. It's not something like, oh, yeah, wow whatever you know you don't help what's in trend you don't help any of those things but at the end of the day i have to admit there has to be a certain element of pretty privilege that has people coming to my channel in much higher droves than say some of the older men that i follow and i have to also admit that there has to be some element of pretty privilege that is absolutely helping aoc she's got you know she's young she's cute she's in those pants suits they put her in some really nice stuff to put her on the cover of what was it vanity fair vogue i don't even remember but i am saying i'm not i don't have an issue with her getting on those magazines if she was as radical as she is proclaiming but i think she's taking up space that someone else deserves and i think we as the left need to find that person who is that person we need to get behind that is actually a leftist that is actually passionate that is actually willing to fight who already has friends, so they don't feel like they need friends from the rest of the Democrats or I don't know who other, you know, the establishment. They're very secure. I mean, that person's going to scare the shit out of the establishment. But yeah, somebody who already feels like they have friends, they are secure. They are secure in their people. And that's what we need because I don't think AOC was secure enough in her people. I don't think she ever even really pledged to be the level of fighter we assumed she was. And honestly, I think we continue to underestimate how hard it is to get out there and, you know, face the establishment. It's hard. It's it's hard to be yourself and not f buckle to the pressure of maybe if I work within this, maybe if I become friends. I'm holding out hope for Nina Turner, but it's a cynical kind of hope. I won't be totally shocked if she disappoints me. But at the same time, I think that's what we need to do. Can we just stop pretending AOC is a leftist. She's pretty centrist. She's her own new form. It's a new brand, I think. And socialist Democrats are capitalists. They're not really leftists. May your ancestors and spirit guides be with you at every crossroads. And I'll see you next time, beloved.